Well, these damn NFL Q&A videos keep getting pushed off and pushed off, but no longer! Promised I'm finally delivering it. Sorry it took so long. Thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for this q and I'm going to dive right in like it's a black pussy. Ah! Anyways, let's get started. It was completely, totally unnecessary and uncalled for, and yet everybody knows. Just saying. TSB Rick, is Derek Carr really as bad as the media says he is? I think you have segments of the media that believe different things about Derek Carr. There are some that think he's really, really, really good. There are other segments that think he's really, really, really overrated. I think Derek Carr is a little overrated. I don't think he's incredibly massively overrated because we're not necessarily been talking about him as an elite guy. There's probably been a lot of top 10 conversation with him. Truth is, he's probably not much better than Andy Dalton. He's an average NFL starting quarterback. You can win some games with. Do you really win a lot of games because of? And is he ever really truly going to be that level of dude? And I just don't know that he is. Stephen Hilton. Since the 2010s are almost done, who are some of the locks to make the all-decade team? Um, locks to make the all-decade team. Um, Brady. He has to be that dude. If you're only going to have one quarterback, if you have two, then it's going to be Aaron Rodgers. Right? Uh, running back-wise, it's going to be probably Adrian Peterson, maybe? He might be a lock. Maybe? Maybe? Probably? I would think he would have to be a lock. Uh, other players just randomly spitballing off of the top of my head. The most likely to be locks for the all-decade team are going to be guys like J.J. Watt and Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack. Um, you know, when you think of guys like that, uh, Patrick Peterson, Richard Sherman, uh, either Earl Thomas or Cam Chancellor. Um, without devoting the entire video to thinking about this, those are just some of the guys that start to kind of reach out. Oh, Von Miller would most certainly be another one too. Um, Gronkowski would be another one. Um, those would be some of those guys. Uh, Vinny, why don't you like the NFC East? Uh, living here in Virginia and having to hear all these Redskins fans all the time, and there's a lot of Cowboys fans out here and Eagles fans out here and Giants fans out here. It's a very heavily NFC East area. It annoys the shit out of me. And there are a lot of years, especially in recent times, where this division is very bad. And the national media and the NFL specifically tries to pump them up like they're something they're not. Now, understanding some of that has to do with size of markets that they are in. None of these are small market teams. They are all major market teams. I get it. When you look at fan bases and television ratings and so forth, I understand why they try to pump up the NFC East because they deliver the goods from a financial and viewership standpoint. But it doesn't mean that the division isn't overrated as shit. And thoughts on the new Monday Night Football crew. I don't know why Booger McFarland is sitting sideline on that little purse that people behind him can't fucking see the game. He needs to be in that damn booth with Tessitore and uh, Witten. He really needs to be in there. I think Witten was put into a spot that he clearly wasn't ready for. Um, Booger adds a lot to it for me. He should be the dude as your lead color analyst. You know, but I'd like to see all three of them in the booth at the same time and see if that helps things. Josh McSwain, who will win the AFC South and what will their final record be? Well, at this particular moment, it looks like the Houston Texans. And I probably stick with that one. But the true crazy thing about it is if you really think about it, the Colts are still technically in this divisional race. And if you think that it sounds crazy... Do any of those other three teams really inspire that much fear out of you right now? That said, I will go with the Texans, and I'll probably say no more than 10 wins. 10 and 6. That's it. Ethan Fuller, who is better at their sport the last 15 years? Tom Brady or LeBron James? That is an excellent, excellent question. Over the last 15 years. Wow. So that takes away Brady's first Super Bowl. But that still gives championships. So that still gives him four Super Bowl championships, three other Super Bowl appearances for a total of seven. Not to mention all the AFC Championship game appearances, uh, the statistical ex excellence that he has, and the age that he is, and the level of play that he still exhibits. Versus LeBron James, one of the all-time greats in NBA history, 
a guy that's won three rings, that made it to the NBA Finals eight straight seasons, nine total trips to the NBA Finals. Man. Like, <laughs> who was better at their sport? I will say LeBron, and the reason I'll say LeBron is when you talk about Tom Brady, there are some people that will think Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback. There are some people that will think, why didn't Drew Brees get more love for being the GOAT? There are still people that hold out for whatever fucking reason I do not know that Peyton Manning is the GOAT. With LeBron, it's understood that he's the best of his era, isn't it? Like, even if you get past the Kobe ball washing. LeBron's better. It's okay. It doesn't mean Kobe's not an all-time great, but LeBron's better. So I would say better at their sport over the last 15 years. Uh, I think I got to go LeBron James. Uh, Vincent Igakun, best corner in the game right now. Good question. I flipped that back to everybody else. Who do you think is the best corner in the game right now? Hmm? Hmm? Because hmm? honestly, it feels like it it flips from like one year to the next. Like it might be as Avery Rhodes or it's a Jalen Ramsey or we look at a Richard Sherman or we look at a Patrick Peterson or somebody like that. But it feels like every year it changes. So it's really hard to say who the true best corner in the game is right now to me anyways. Bipolar Bear. Which team is currently the most slept on in the NFL? I really feel like it's the San Diego Chargers. This team is 5-2 and two and nobody fucking talks about it. I just said the San Diego Chargers again. The Los Angeles Chargers are 5-2. and two. I can't even get the city right for them, and I'm not the only one still slipping up, and nobody's talking about them. They're slept on as much as anybody. NFC side, probably the Carolina Panthers. They made it to the Super Bowl a few years back. They've got a franchise quarterback in Cam Newton. They've got a defense that can do some things. They've got a head coach that doesn't coach scared in Ron Rivera, who has a lot of big game experience himself. Both as a player and a coach, um, they're slept on a lot, just like the Los Angeles Chargers are. Stephen Bradley, is Urban Meyer done? Mm, no, I don't think so. It was a really bad loss to Purdue, but is he done? Uh, that seems a bit extreme. If they didn't already fire him, why would he have to leave now? Lucas Feuerstein, can the Chargers overtake the Chiefs and get a first-round bye in the playoffs too? Um... They could still absolutely overtake the Chiefs in that division. You know, it could be a situation where one team goes 13-3 and three and the other team goes like 11-5 and five or 12-4. and four. That's very possible. I think they can. I don't know that they will, but I definitely think they can. And if they do, there's a very good chance when you look at the AFC North as a really good division and the AFC South sucks – that the team that wins the AFC West, worst case scenario, is looking at a number two seed. So if they overtake the Chiefs, there's a very likelihood that they'll get a first round bye. Max Warman, does Julio Jones's lack of touchdowns uh, reflect a bigger knock on him or the play calling? Some of it could be play calling. Some of it might be on Julio. Some of it could also just be Matt Ryan. And the decisions that he makes and who he decides to target. I mean, if other guys are open, I mean, it's really, really hard to sit there and say you have to force the touchdowns to Julio. It is concerning that he's kind of contracted Shockey's disease. And by that, I mean Jeremy Shockey, also known as Keyshawn Johnson's disease, where you have a total and complete allergy to the end zone. But yeah, it's a little surprising with him. Halloween, where are you at? Do you think the Jaguars trade for a quarterback at the trade deadline? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think they do. Brett Solberg, have the Saints completely run away from the NFC South? No, because last time I checked, aren't the Carolina Panthers 4-2 and two and only one game behind them? A lot of football left. Um, they've clearly run away from Tampa and Atlanta, but they haven't run away from Carolina. Those teams will have something to say about it before the season is over, though. Josh Bros, should the Titans start thinking about moving on from Mariota? I don't know if it's fully time to panic yet, but it's time to be a little concerned and maybe start time start the time now to 
perhaps have some of those internal conversations about what they're going to do going forward. As they have to figure out whether they're going to commit a shit ton of money to Mariota, all of that. Chris Krager, will Buffalo win another game this season? The Bills have already won two games, and it feels like that's asking a lot. But they've got to win at least one or two more, so I will go with yes. The Chris Phoenix, do you really buy the hype for the Tennessee Titans? Did I? No. If I remember correctly, in my season preview videos, didn't I pick the Titans to finish last in the AFC South? And I say they would be like 7-9. and nine? I could be remembering incorrectly. But please let Chris know in the comments if I'm right, that I wasn't buying it, and then I had him in last place. I, I swear that's what I did. Uh, DeQuanta Clark, if you were starting a team, who would be your running back and your wide receiver? My running back and my wide receiver. My running back, assuming he behaved, would be Ezekiel Elliott or Todd Gurley. Either one, I don't feel like I could go wrong. I like Saquon, but he's not good enough consistently enough between the tackles as a runner right now. Um, so either Gurley or Elliott, and I don't care which one. Give me one, I'll be really, really fucking happy. Wide receiver. Wide receiver. If I was starting a team right now. Wow. Wide receiver. Because you got to factor in age and shelf life, how much time they have left in their career. Hmm. I think even with some of the issues, you still got to go Odo Beckham Jr. Because there's nobody like him. Derek Bruno, your offensive and defensive rookies of the year so far. You have to stay tuned for my midseason award show to find that out. I'll have a decision in another week or so. I am Doofy, the worst team with a winning record and the best team with a losing record. Worst team with a winning record. Worst team with a winning record. I'm trying to run through my mind right now. Um, probably either the Jets or the Dolphins. Feels like the right answer. Best team with a losing record. I suppose the safe answer is probably the Philadelphia Eagles. I feel like they've got a run coming in them at some point in time this year. JT Evans, should the Dolphins make drafting a quarterback early in 2019 a top priority? Yes. Joe Jones, why does ESPN lie and say the NBA can pass the NFL in five years? I did not know they were saying this. I don't know if I fully believe that they are saying this. But if enough talking heads on that network were saying that, then people should understand just how little credibility they have. A bu 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 bullshit. The NBA can hardly get people to give a shit about the regular season, let alone most of the playoffs, if it doesn't involve LeBron, the Warriors, and the Rockets. They're going to pass the NFL. bu 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 bullshit. Especially in the next five years. Jordan, should the Cardinals consider trading Chandler Jones or Patrick Peterson? If the price is right, why not? You stink. You need to totally rebuild. If you can clear cap space and get some valuable draft pick currencies and commodities for Jones and Peterson, yes. Would they get the type of value that they probably want? No. But they should consider it. Kieran Chase, the chances of the Ravens winning the AFC North and how far can they go in the playoffs? They have a chance to win that division. I think it's either them or the Patriots. The way it then you can tell I'm recording these videos at one o'clock in the morning. I just work like 15 hours a day. My bad, everybody. I'm not on top of my game. The Ravens or the Steelers, one of those two teams, is winning that division. If the Ravens get into the playoffs, they can run the ball a little bit. They've got an experienced quarterback, even if it's not great. The skill talent around them offensively is better. That defense is really good, elite, unlike their quarterback. Uh, the Ravens can make a lot of noise. The Ravens could potentially go to the Super Bowl. And as crazy as that sounds, we saw Joe Flacco six years ago get hot for a few game stretch. Who's to say it won't happen again? Thanks to all of you that asked your questions. That's enough recording for me for one night. I got to go to bed. Later.